I'm David Harvey and welcome to Harvey's of Whitney. We're an old established family business going back some 70 years and in this masterclass video I will show you some of the importance of the research work we do into the background of these pieces which I hope you will find useful when buying antique furniture. A good dealer is always more than happy to share his research and knowledge as the basis for the trust between the dealer and collector. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notifications of future videos on buying antique furniture. Click the link below to subscribe to our free newsletter, packed full of details of fresh acquisitions and news from the antiques trade. In this masterclass, we shall be discussing the 17th century equivalent of a modern day safe and discovering together the joys of finding hidden compartments, secret compartments, and I'm sure you can all remember playing hide and seek as children, standing counting to a hundred, and then trying to find your friend or sibling. Today we will be exploring hidden or secret compartments and highlighting the incredible lengths people went to in order to hide things. What were they hiding? Why? Where should you seek to find? And will you be the lucky person finding a piece of history which has lain undisturbed in a secret box for centuries? Whether it is jewels, gold coins, medals, state papers, wills, testaments or leases, I feel sure you will find this excursion into the hidden world of secret compartments fascinating. And what better way to start than with a 17th century masterpiece with some 40 secrets to reveal? Well, I said that for this masterclass we'd be talking about secret compartments, hidden compartments. And when we look at a piece like this, what are we looking at? This was made during the reign of Charles II in about 1680. How do we know that? Well, there are two very important pointers to the age of this piece. The first is the fact that the drawers have all got side runners on them, rather than the runners being on the underside of the drawers. That is an early technique of cabinet making. The other reason for saying this is that on this piece, this very important moulding here is part of and applied to the top of the piece. By the time you get to about 1690, 1700, that moulding became part of the base with the top being separate and sitting within that moulding. So that helps us to judge this being from about 1680. It's veneered in burr walnut. I'm often asked, well, what is a burr? It's actually, and I'm sure that you've seen it on trees as you've driven through the countryside, it's a growth on the outside of a tree, rather like a carbuncle. You often find it on the root base of a tree as well. And they only ever come to light, obviously, when the tree is blown over or felled. So here we have a piece that dates from about 1680 that is veneered in this wonderful burr walnut, Burr walnut of this quality would have been right at the top of the tree, if I can put it like that. It would have been one of the most expensive woods, natural woods to the UK at that time. And here we have a piece that hides what's inside. And if I open this full, it comes down like that. And you can see, again, there are any number of refinements, such as these slots on the sides to take these cast iron stays here. It has got a reading stand here in the middle, which has a stay on it for resting a book so that you can sit and read there as well. And then we look at this and we think, well, what is going on here? When you look for secret compartments, you should be looking for the voids, for the areas where nothing seems to be going on. And here you have it. There doesn't seem to be anything going on here. Until that is, you release a spring catch there, and that whole section just flaps up like that. And as you can see, you've got pigeonholes all the way across there. But that wasn't enough, because the man that made this put in a loper here on that side to rest that on so that as you were taking these out you wouldn't have that crack you on the top of the skull. 
So here we've got these pigeonholes. Now, when you see something like that, it's interesting to compare the depth of this with the depth of the piece, because this only goes, what, maybe two-thirds of the way back. Executed in solid walnut, beautifully dovetailed, beautifully made, and for keeping all your little notes in. And hidden away behind here, we've got three beautiful little drawers. One, two, three. And each one has a handwritten label on the back telling you where it fits. Left hand, number two. Left hand, number one. And not surprisingly, left hand, number three. We didn't stop with that one, because the same thing happens here. Only behind there, there are two larger boxes, and again, they've got labels on them. And you see this one, again, solid walnut all the way through, it's labelled number two, middle. And the one on the far side, it's the same as this, and again, they're all labelled, only those are right, number one, number two, and number three. So we're starting to see what's going on here. Somebody had a lot of valuable things that they didn't want others to see. Now, who were these others that might see? Well, it could be staff. There was a level of mistrust between the different classes during the 17th and 18th and 19th centuries. So you wouldn't want your staff to see your papers, your private papers. Or was it jewels? Was it diamonds? Could it have been the badges of state? The insignia of office? Or if you were a commander or a general, would this have been where you kept your medals? This as a medal cabinet. But even these internal drawers here have a secret. So what is that secret? Well, if you take that drawer out, there is a bolt under there, a little wooden bolt, and if you release it, you can then take that entire compartment out. And you can see the bolt on the side there. There it is, and it just locks into a hole in the side there. And again, that just slides back in. Everything fits so, so perfectly. This really is the Rolls Royce of cabinet making. And then this one wide drawer here comes out. I was looking at this and that comes out. Now, why would that come out? And the answer is here. Because if you couldn't get that out, you wouldn't be able to access what is in here. And what is in here is these little covers and behind there more little drawers with labels. Number one, inside drawers. I've known this piece for nearly 20 years. I first had this in an exhibition of mine 15 years ago. It took me hours to find out where all the secret compartments were, but it was such fun, as you can imagine. When you see a piece like this, it begs the question, what was it for? Well, this would have been, as we've said in the introduction, an early safe. They didn't have huge iron safes, but this was the sort of piece you would have had. You would have kept your valuables in there. You'd have kept your medals, your jewels, coins, gold coins. We didn't have a bank on every high street in those days. Banks were very few and far between. So coinage was the currency of the realm. And you'd have paid your rent. You'd have paid every bill in cash. 
and somebody had a lot to hide away. Having said all of that, this piece is such extraordinary quality with these beautiful burr veneers and the quality of the workmanship, it must have been made for somebody very, very important. Somebody who had great wealth and was able to afford to have the very best made. This was made in London, make no bones about it. This is a capital piece made for a capital person. This is special. Everything about this is special. Everything from these wonderful, wonderful locks and bolts right the way through. This is a masterpiece and it's been a privilege to do a masterclass about such a masterpiece. I'm often asked whether I've ever found anything valuable hidden away. And I did recently come across a collection of pre-decimalisation UK coinage and some old stamps and occasionally long exhausted post office savings bank books, but nothing of any great value. On the other hand, I can reveal the story of a client who moved his home from London to New York only to find he had mislaid his gold cigar cutter, a 25th anniversary present from his wife, and he phoned me in a panic to get directions on how to open the secret compartments in his bureau where he thought the missing item might be. We were successful. I do hope you have enjoyed viewing this video, and there will be follow-up videos with discussions and fresh stock items as they become available. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get news of future editions on buying antiques safely. Click the link below to subscribe to our free regular e-newsletter with further images of fresh acquisitions as well as free invitations to antiques fairs and exhibitions. Thank you.